Hi folks, it's Sonia with 2x2 Legoto. We are finally having a sunny day here and I am sitting in the car um, waiting for my daughter to finish her equestrian lesson. So I thought I would talk to you guys today about um, children and dogs and just kind of give my philosophy and maybe give some pointers, tips, and help um, to some people out there who are either getting one of our dogs or in, already have one of our dogs or anticipating getting a puppy at some point in the future from me or anybody else. Um, the first thing I want to point out is that if you have um, young children, children under the age of maybe let's say eight, um, proceed with caution with the type of dog you get. Use some common sense. Um, if you have children, you probably do not want to look at a breed of dogs that is terribly excitable. Border Collies, Australian Shepherds, um, Belgian Malinois, German Shepherds. Um, they can be very excitable. Australian Cattle Dogs, um, trying to think of some of the other breeds. Terriers, oh my goodness, Terriers. Sorry, Terrier friends. And um, it's just the nature of the beast. They can be quite excitable. So if you're an experienced dog person and you know this and you have young children, then you'll probably be fine. But if you are not an experienced dog person and then you need to, like I said, proceed with caution. Um, a lot of people think that they have experience with dogs um, because they grew up with dogs, but I've talked to, over, over my 30 years of doing this, I've talked to a lot of people who have very romantic notions about their childhood and dogs. They had no recollection of mom getting up in the middle of the night to let dogs go out to potty. They had no recollection of dad um, taking the dog for long walks in order to give it proper exercise. They just remember playing in the field of daisies with their wonderful childhood dog. So not to burst anyone's bubble, but owning a puppy on the front end it is some work. Now that is a very short period of time. Puppyhood is so short, gone in the blink of an eye. And most of us like to repeat the process and get another puppy. Um, so it, it comes with the good and the bad. And, you know, we try to eliminate a lot of the bad for our puppy clients. I don't want any stress. I don't want chaos. I don't want um, difficult transitions. You know, that's why our puppies stay with us until they're 10 or 12 weeks of age. That's why we introduce puppies to crates and to housebreaking and to the leash and the collar. And that is also why we introduce our puppies to the concept of spending some time away from litter mates, um, with other dogs, around other animals. That's why we take puppies on car rides and um, that's why we um, utilize the puppy culture method because it just builds bomb-proof puppies. And all of the neurodevelopmental stimulation that we do as a foundation builds bomb-proof puppies. So, yes, I mentioned this is about um, dogs and children, but I just wanted to touch base on all of those things. So, let's, um, let's get down to the nitty-gritty then, talking about children and puppies. Um, Children who are um, between the ages of um, two and six or seven can be as excitable as puppies. And so when you mix puppies in with young children, that can be a recipe for disaster if you don't go into it eyes wide open. So puppies act like puppies all the time. Children act like children all the time and they don't speak dog language and they don't have some of the reasoning skills that we as adults have so it's important to note here that you should never leave 
your puppy or your dog alone with your child. It is just common sense. Because no matter how sound and sane and bomb-proof your puppy is, or your adult dog, oh, he would never bite or nip. Well, under the right circumstances, a dog is going to behave like a dog will behave. And they can't tell your child, please stop doing that, or please don't pick me up and set me down so hard, or you know what, I've had enough play for today, I'm tired. They, they can't do those things, so they utilize what skills they have. Their skill set includes getting up and walking away. 99% of my puppies will get up and walk away. If they're tired, if they don't want to be harassed or played with or picked up or tussled or roughhoused, or chase the ball, if they don't want to do those things, they will get up and walk away. Now, 99% of children will follow said puppy. Then said puppy's left with a couple of other options to give a warning growl, which is not common, but it's not surprising, in that if your puppy views your child as a litter mate, they will issue that warning. The next warning that can be given would be a nip. They could nip um, your child or you out of fatigue, out of frustration, out of overstimulation. Now, I've had owners call me and they've got young children and they'll report, hey, the puppy just growled at my child. Well, let's talk about what was going on. Is it time for your puppy's nap? Um, had they been playing for a long time? Has your puppy had adequate exercise? And do you have proper boundaries in place with your children? Um, a lot of times, um, and I don't mean to step on anybody's toes here, parenting philosophies are as different as breeds of dogs and I just want to help. I want to be the um, the bearer of good news and the bearer of ideas and concepts that will help you have a peaceful home with your new puppy. And so knowing this on the front end or even you know you've had your puppy for a while or your puppy from us is now an adult um, and you're thinking about getting a second one or you know you didn't have children when you got your first one but now children are on the horizon I just want to help so um, following the puppy schedule that we outline um, with a minimum of two naps a day is very beneficial adding to that um, time breaks where your puppy can be in their playpen, they can be in their crate, maybe they're not napping, maybe they're just resting, or even adding a third and fourth nap to the day is very beneficial for everyone, for the children, for the puppy, and for you. Um, making sure on the front end that your children have an adequate understanding on their level of what puppyhood and adding this new puppy is going to look like. So we follow the schedule, just like children have a schedule and thrive on a schedule, mommy is going to, and daddy are going to follow the schedule for our new puppy. That means they have a time to eat, a time to play, a time to rest, a time to exercise, and time out. Um, time out from our family so that they can regroup and rest their brain. It's a lot to be a puppy. I mean, when they go home, they're 10 or 12 weeks, and so you can measure the time that they've been on the planet in days. And, you know, that's very significant when you think about um, how easily overstimulated a puppy can get. The other thing that, um, back again, the other thing that parents need to know is that when children run and play 
which children will do, that will stimulate the puppy to think, oh, I need to run and play too. When puppies and children are running and playing, it is all fun and games until the puppy sinks its teeth into the child's clothing or shoe or arm or fingers because they're playing. So again, you need to make sure that you are supervising the play. Play at the two to four year old range needs to involve mom and dad assisting throwing the ball, assisting helping the child walk the puppy, um, and really low key um, activities. Anything between four and 10 year old, well, let's back up. Between four and eight years old can include the children helping feed the dog, which they should routinely be a part of. Um, it should include the child helping clean up after the dog. It should include um, assisting and in being involved in the training of the puppy. So involve your child in the training sessions. Show them the videos, um, the Zach George videos on how to train your puppy. Um, you'd be surprised at how fast your child will pick up what needs to be done. And quite honestly, sometimes the children are more consistent than the adults in puppy training. So involving them um, is very beneficial. Also sitting your children down before puppy comes, or in some cases the puppy's already in your home, sitting them down and saying, hey, this is the behavior that excites puppies. If you're jumping up and down and screaming to keep the puppy from jumping on you or nipping at you, that's only going to incite the puppy to do it more because they think you're playing. And also letting children know that tug of war should not happen at this age. I used to be um, a huge disadvocate of um, tug of war. Now I see its benefits, but you have to know what you're doing. And there's some great videos, YouTube videos, on how to play tug of war with your dog. Um, you need to have very good drop it. You need to have a very good leave it you need to have a very obedient dog um, otherwise you could get into trouble and certainly not with the Legoto I mean you're not they're not an aggressive breed they don't have huge resource guarding issues which I'll talk about in a minute um, they don't have problems surrendering boundaries although it's best as parents to teach your children that puppies and dogs need boundaries um, so, but tug of war can be a tool. Um, a couple of other things, um, with children, you know, just teaching them proper manners with the dog. The dog has to sit in order to be petted. The dog should sit for adults when adults, um, want to pet the dog. And all the more so with a, a child. Um, the nice thing about Legoto is they're very intuitive, so they're not going to mow a child over. Um, unless they're overstimulated and unless they are the um, the highly active energetic puppy in the litter um, but those are few and far between and they usually stay with us um, so having your child learn the same things that you are learning meaning we need to behave in calm assertive pack leader mode um, having your children follow suit with you so that the puppy learns to respect the child or children is very important. That's critical because if the children are wrestling around on the ground or playing tug of war with the puppy or running around free for all style, the puppy is going to automatically assume that the children are litter mates because let's face it what the puppy sees is the children um, sitting down at the table and you feed them well you feed the dog too so that automatically puts the puppy on the same level believe it or not dogs figure that out so our goal is to assist you you help your child 
feed the puppy, you help your child train the puppy, you give your child the resources and tools that the child needs to make sure that they're maintaining good boundaries with the puppy and that the puppy respects the boundaries that you're setting for the child on behalf of the child. I hope that helps. I hope it makes sense. And of course, I'm always available for questions. A um, couple of other things to mention with regard to this is um, children and feeding dogs. Um, you need to always teach your child that the puppy needs to sit for all food, even in their crate. We advocate crate feeding. And it's very critical when you're... Um, anticipating adding another dog in the future or you're adding your puppy to a home where there's already a dog or multiple dogs anytime you've got multiple dogs everybody needs to eat separately and the best way we have found to do that is to feed everybody in their crates it's also beneficial when you've got toddlers um, infants that are learning to crawl um, that puppy is fed in their crate with the door closed and you teach your child that's a no that's off limits that's puppy's food and puppy's time to eat um, I have never had anyone report to me that a Logoto challenged them over um, feeding time or food dishes um, anything I anything like that um, tired dogs can challenge their owners Ooh, excuse me for that yawn. Um, tired dogs, meaning they're overstimulated, can challenge their owners when they think that they need to resource guard. Resource guarding is, um, let's say the, you're fixing dinner and you drop, um, you drop a spoon on the floor that had food on it or you drop a... Um, you drop a bone on the floor from something you were cutting, the dog's there, snatches it, runs over to his safe place, which could be under a table, behind a couch, under your bed. You attempt to retrieve that, and your dog is like, oh no, you did not just do that. A, if your dog's challenging you, there could be some issues in the home which are making the dog perceive himself as higher than you in the hierarchy of pack order so I would do everything to correct that we usually call that boot camp that means no high places that means the dog sits for everything including affection they sit when you walk in the house they sit when you let them out they sit when you are um, letting them out the door or in the door and no high places meaning no beds furniture etc they're not crawling all over you um, while you're sitting on the couch and very actively um, training and actively exercising. A lot of times dogs who are behaving badly just need more exercise. So um, there's those things to consider. Um, when you have someone, someone, when you have a dog that has, um, excuse me for the yawn again, um, that has had a time or two of resource guarding when you've tried to take something else away. What we suggest is those three things, boot camp, exercise, and um, a method we call the trade. So um, you need to be a calm, assertive pack leader when you're attempting to take something away from a dog who has challenged you. Um, I have only had two Legoto in my 10 years of breeding reportedly have a resource guarding moment and it was very quickly remedied by the things that I've outlined but if your child is trying to take something away from a dog or you are and you have an issue um, you need to set the dog up so they need to take something um, and then you need to find something of high value to trade be it a treat be it a piece of lunch meat, a piece of cheese, um, their favorite toy, and make the trade. Here, look, here's your squeaky toy. I'm going to give you this, but I'm taking that. And um, as you build on that, you will eventually just be able to tell them to drop it, and they'll drop it. So you're taking it, telling them to drop it, and giving them the high value trade. Um, 
I hope this helps with um, people and children and planning and um, children you may have in the home with your with your puppy or future puppy and if you have any questions you can reach out to me um, you can email me at 2 by 2 legoto at comcast.net um, you can call me if you've got my number and um, I want you to like our page I'd love for you to um, share this and you can go visit our um, Facebook page which is 2 by 2 Legoto on Facebook um, thank you for watching and I hope you guys have a great sunny spring thanks <laughs>